Hi. I'm Scamboli, and get this, I actually plan on not wasting your time, so down below I've compiled a nice neat list of all the manhwa I'll be talking about. I expect you to hop around each timestamp, and if you're not digging the manhwa I'm talking about, just skip it and find another one. A little star will be attached to manhwa that I think are especially good, but keep in mind that I tried to keep only that good good because I am a genius. So I recommend you at least listen to the summary of each one before you decide to skip to the next, even if it's in a weird genre you don't normally read. Isekai has been fucked to death. Isekai is the mumble rap of the anime industry. But what if he took this guy, gave him mental disabilities, and made him short and hateful? You get this guy. FFF Trash Hero is about a guy who's been summoned out of nowhere to a fantasy world in order to defeat the Demon King. After 10 long years and finally getting to the demon, he one-shots him, excited to finally return back to Earth. The god of this fantasy world comes down to congratulate him, and then reveals that he was being scored via a report card based on his combat power, achievements, reputation, and character. Yeah, about that character score. The powerful comrades that the hero met on his journey were actually really not cool people, and our main character thought the mission would be a bit easier if he murdered them each one by one. So instead of going back to Earth, the hero fails his test and is sent back to the first day he was summoned in order to retake the test and get a passing score. He even has a teacher that periodically chimes in when he's doing something shady. That's pretty much the start. The root of what makes this story so much fun to read is the unconventional main character. He's a guy that's already beaten the world and kind of views all the inhabitants as NPCs. And because of his past experiences, he ends up solving issues in the most unpredictable yet extremely rational ways. For example, there's this one part where a guy robs the girl he's walking with and he just straight up breaks his fucking back. That's not very hero-like, but the guy was also a murderer with a high level, meaning he kinda had it coming. He could buy a slave to use on his adventures because he's not like other masters, or he could just kill her for experience and save himself a couple years worth of work. He does seemingly dickish things like this all the time, but the more you think about it, the more his moves make sense. You slowly realize he's kind of right about everything. They kidnapped this poor kid and forced him to train under these assholes for 10 years straight just to repeat it again. A lot of the character tropes that are commonplace in other stories would be hella annoying in real life. He even ends up killing this chick eventually for that same reason. It's fun to watch this cynical dude who views all the inhabitants as NPCs solve problems in these crazy outlandish ways that other characters wouldn't dare to. He knows all the gimmicks and events of the world already, so he spends a lot of this series trying to speed run to the final boss. Again, it's really fun. I love the story, the art's good, the characters are all distinct looking, the setting's slightly different than other isekai, and overall, this is a nice book with a strong imaginary heading saying, you haven't read anything like this. Please note, however. A lot of the people couldn't stand the main character being sort of a bad guy, so I guess there's a chance you won't be that into it. But if you're at all intrigued by the plot, I would definitely give this manhwa a shot for at least the first three chapters before deciding to ditch it. Speaking of isekai, I've been reading another high tier one called Otherworldly Sword King Survival Record. The book kicks off pretty much exactly how you'd expect. A random gamer is selected as a candidate to be sent to another world. They get their powers through things called guidelines, which give the user a game-like experience. However, our main character's guideline is installed incorrectly, and he's quickly pushed into a hellscape to fend for himself until he can reach level 5 and move to the next world. So he grinds mobs every day that's skilled to his experience until he finds out that every time he reaches level 5, he actually reverts back to level 1 and is stuck in this world forever. Every day stronger mobs attack him as he starts to go crazy. There's no people, he eats the same food, it's a shitty place where the only thing that's keeping him going is a slim chance that the guideline happens to work. And eventually, I'm not going to explain exactly how it happens, but he gets out to the next world. Now, the main character is obviously ridiculously overpowered, but that doesn't mean everything's all fine and dandy. Upon hearing the lore of the new world he's in, he learns that people from other worlds like him are hunted down and killed due to some stuff in the past. This means that people close to him, and even acquaintances are always in a state of danger, leading to some really tense moments and mind games that almost make you nervous. And just because this guy's escaped hell doesn't mean he's all good upstairs either. He faces trauma, is prone to depression, and all that sort of stuff. This is where a lot of people add problems with the main character, because he's pretty mopey for like 10 chapters, but I used to be emo, so I fall for that edgy shit all the time. Anyway, the comic's a comedy at heart with some occasional knee slappers. I would say that while the story definitely has some real serious moments and dark tones, it's pretty funny and lighthearted for the most part. And did I mention the fights because they slap? There's no shortage of action. Pulled together by some super pretty art and colors, it's a good time. So yeah, if you want a fun read with some serious twists in a world that has you wanting to learn more, definitely run this one up. The main character is cool, the side characters are cool, it's just cool. And now that we got the attention of all the little kids by bringing up Isekai, Get the fuck out! Get the fuck- Shoo! Shoo! Fuck! Every time I mention kids, these damn Smash players... Anyway, it's time for some good old-fashioned grown man shit. Previously, I mentioned Red Storm, but what I didn't mention was Peerless Dad, which was made by the same author, in the same universe. Kinda. 
Fearless Dad is about an ex-mercenary turned father who's trying his best to raise his kids as a single dad. He was trained by a mysterious master and later became a special problem solver who would go around killing people as long as he was paid. But once he meets a nice pretty lady with some nice pretty lady vibes, he begins to have thoughts of settling down. When they end up having kids, his wife doesn't make it and he has to support his newborns the only way he knows how, by beating people up. This time around, however, he decides to go legit and lands a job as being the guardian of a gate. But because his mysterious teacher seems to be a little bit more important than our main character is aware of, he's ridiculously strong. And his quiet job as a gatekeeper is slowly interrupted by harder and harder jobs in exchange for a better life for his kids. He goes on rescue missions, bill collection, he beats up bad guys, you can pretty much imagine what kind of jobs they're sending an ex-mercenary to do. What's cool is how No goes about it. He's an experienced fighter and sort of overpowered from the training he went through as a kid. So they send him out to bandit strongholds by himself and he fights waves of enemies time and time again. This wealth of experience that he has makes a lot of the situations really, really interesting to watch, like when he slowly and methodically thinks out plans on the fly or recalls past experiences to handle negotiations. But when it all hits the fan and Noah has to throw some hands, it looks insanely good. The fights are well choreographed and the anatomy is on point. It's likely to have you sitting there staring at the art for a while before you decide to scroll down. And despite being seemingly overpowered, Noah is humbled time and time again. He actually gets hurt and discovers the gap between himself and the truly strong people of the world. Whereas other manhwa are just concerned with making their characters as strong and unbeatable as possible right off the bat. But cool fights and great art alone do not make this a notable manhwa. It's the character and the story. I love that Noah's just a wholesome dude who wants to set his kids up for life, even if he happens to die on one of these jobs. We get to learn more and more about his past slowly while we're busy enjoying the eye candy in various little arcs. It's a great story in a very well thought out and politically based world carried by a great main character. If you enjoy Red Storm, if you're interested in Legend of the Northern Blade, or are intrigued by the summary, give this one a spin for like 20 chapters or so. I think there's a great payoff, it updates constantly, and it just gets better the longer the series goes on. So far. 130 years ago, the Silent Night attacked, instilling chaos across the world. One day, the world's best martial artists gathered and established the Northernly Heavenly- Fuck! The Northern Heavenly sect in response, slowly creating a giant hub world filled with the strongest, most badass big Korean guys. You may ask, what is the Silent Night? And I would respond by saying, I don't fucking know, but believe it or not, that's actually the least cool part about the story. Remember that northernly heavenly sect that defends the border? Well, they put in charge four super badasses all with their own unique skill sets and one main dude who's in charge of the whole thing. But believe it or not, that's actually the second least cool part about this thing. Those four badasses I mentioned? Yeah, they're actually four dickheads who betray and frame the main guy in charge for unknown reasons. So the main guy in charge says, okay, I'll go along with everything and disband the sect, but you gotta let my kid live. They agree, and so he kills himself right in front of everyone, including his son, Jin. Bam, that's how the story starts. So, as you might guess, the main character is actually Jin. He lives a pretty horrible life of torture and subservience after. In order to stop Jin from getting revenge, they imprison him in his own home and forbid him from learning martial arts, meaning the main character has to grind in this really creative way I never would have thought of. Overall, the story is consistently unique in a lot of aspects so far. Eventually, as you might expect, Jin escapes and goes through a time skip. It's all cool stuff from there. Everything about this manhwa, the art style, the main character, the plot, the milkers, the tremendous milkers are so above average. Jin went through a lot of physical and mental torture for years, his body's painted with scars and, despite the odds, comes out a real mature and modest man. He's a character that makes sensible, rational decisions and is a kind dude, which puts him in a weird situation with the whole revenge thing. So that little facet of his character is pretty cool, but it should be noted that he's a bad motherfucker. The fights are awesome, he's got powers which in this world is martial arts, and he's pretty strong as a result of training alone. I'm gonna try and not to spoil any of that, but just keep in mind that it's all pretty cool. Story-wise, the writing is a million times higher class than most of the garbage I read. Art-wise, the character design and style is out there and super pleasant to look at. So far, it's a quality read that I get excited for every update. And I mean every update, the chapters are long and it comes out often. If you're not intrigued after two chapters, the story ain't for you. If you want more alpha male material to put some hair on that little bird chest of yours, God of Blackfield has got you. A group of French mercenaries are on an important mission in the middle of Africa. The god of Blackfield is the biggest, most badass merc around, and also our main character. While he and his homies are gearing up for war, giggling and laughing like the start of every war scene, it all goes to shit. And as he starts pulling up, our main character is shot in the back of the head, meaning someone betrayed him. But instead of dying, he wakes up in the body of Kang Chan, a high schooler who tried to kill himself. This is by no means a unique premise, in fact you've probably heard it a million times. But this story stands out amidst the group in two main facets. 
events, the setting, and the main character. Most of the time in these stories, some coomer gets sent back in time and he knows everything about the future and uses some special meditation skill to be stronger than everyone else. Or in Japanese, he's that guy, some dusty old fucktard gets reborn in another world, and the first thing they think is, all right, cool. I'm gonna fuck some miners, where are the miners? And live some high school harem fantasy. But there's one big difference between a main character like this You can relax around me, like Pochi and Tama do. Oh no. And Kang Chan. This guy is an absolute alpha male. Throughout the story, he does not give one single fuck. He's an anti-simp who runs around gaming up MILFs and doesn't deal with some petty high schooler drama. For like the first 10 chapters, sure, he beats up some bullies that pushed the previous owner of his body to suicide, but after that, he just does grown man stuff and goes on a journey for revenge. This means you have an experienced, grizzled veteran using all his prior knowledge to deal with weird situations. He's scanning the world to find clues on who killed him, crushing gang organizations, and dealing with the relationships that the previous previous owner of his body created. One thing I also thought was cool was how the main character has more of a western mindset from traveling everywhere. There's this one chapter where some chick is like, watch out for that girl, I hear she has sex. And Kang Chan is all like, what is this bitch talking about? It's cool to finally read from the perspective of an actual bro. The art's also great, so all the fights look neato, like when Kang goes berserker mode on people. Overall, if you're not at least intrigued by my summary, don't bother checking this one out. I like it a lot, but if none of what I said seems appealing, I don't think it's for you. I have another story from an author we've heard from before, Sweet Home. From the lady behind Bastard comes yet another psychological thriller that had me shaking in my boots. If you trust my taste, I'd suggest you check this manhwa out without me giving you a summary because the first four chapters are way better experience without knowing what's gonna happen. Fair warning. Hyun is a teenager with a tragic past who's resolved to kill himself on a specific date. His whole family died in some sort of accident, and he's left by himself in a new apartment complex counting the days he has left. But lately, Everywhere Hyun goes, there's odd signs, brief, ominous moments, something isn't right. On one of the rare days he decides to leave his room, he sees a trail of food he delivered. He traces the empty packages up to his neighbor's room, and catches a glimpse of something that'd soon stay with him forever. Sweet Home takes place in the early stages of a world afflicted with a zombie infection in the perspective of a previously suicidal main character. Holy shit, that's a mouthful. Zombies are another genre that's been fucked to death, but Sweet Home takes an immensely creative twist on the zombie genre. Those who are infected are worn down mentally and eventually transform into an avatar of their desire. So if you die while wanting to hide, you might become translucent. If you're obsessed with your body, you might look like this guy. As such, there's a massive wealth of dangerous monsters that the characters have to face off against, which allows the author to create some of the most tense scenes I've ever read, like I actually got physically nervous reading chapter 3. Every fight is essentially a puzzle for the characters that seems impossible to win until they find the last little puzzle piece. Now if we zip back over to the characters, they work really well in the story. Hune's neighbors all take the main stage as essential pieces in what make this whole shebang good. There's a bunch of clashing personalities and desires that have important roles. There's cool guys, there's some cool girls, uh, what are we missing? Uh, oh yeah, 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 annoying crybaby cuckolds who get people killed, you always need those in a zombie story, and there's some more cool dudes. These personalities grow on you and the main character, making it a million times more impactful when it comes to loss and sacrifice, which happens a lot, the author isn't scared to kill people. Overall, this is a lovely story with a lot of layers. The main character is a boy who's beginning to remember what it's like to live. There's constant suspense and unnerving moments that keep you on the edge of your seat, and the zombies work weird. Over 130 chapters later, we're still figuring things out about them. Give it a read for a solid 5 chapters, and if you're not digging it at all, drop it. I want to beat people up. But I talk about anime for a living, that's not happening, I'd fuck around and look like Peter Griffin if things went south. So what is the adult thing to do? Yes. Read cartoon Korean kids do it instead. The boxer puts three different characters under the spotlight. Bakugo is an insanely talented boxer who was born with a knack for hitting people. He's the talk of the gym, overall a cocky dude, and is also the bully of our two other main characters. Call Me Carson is harassed by a group of people led by Bakugo on the daily. Despite the bullying, he's a real wholesome guy. But the other boring looking dude who gets bullied the worst, He's the interesting one. Yu has some sort of horrible past in which he was briefly touched by boxing. I don't really know more than that. While he's getting beat up in an alleyway by Bakugo's goons, Yu is spotted by a boxing coach who realizes something's off about him. So he scouts him and encourages Yu to come down to a gym. And on one day, the three of our main characters' lives were changed forever. When Carson stood up to fit the Bakugo. That's about all I can say without crazy spoilers. Now I'm not a guy who often frequents sports content in any form, but I've been eating the boxer up. Pause. Forget the story, let's just talk about the choreography. The fights are wonderful. When you stare at a panel, it seamlessly plays back in your head like you're actually watching a fight. Unfortunately, I can't show you much for the sake of spoilers, but all the ass whooping so far have been pretty well done, which is super exciting seeing how young the series is. Now the main main character, tight as fuck. 
I'm not gonna spoil too much and there's only like 15 chapters out, but it's pretty obvious that this guy is a beast. His moments in the manhwa so far are insane and I'd love to see where the rest of the story takes him. I will say though, I don't know how much the author really knows about boxing because like some of the stuff he says, I'll just sit there like, Okay, but aside from that, everyone who's reading, myself included, are super excited to see where the rest of the story goes. It's looking like if they keep up the same quality for the rest of the story, this will be an ultra popular webtoon. Even now, it's getting a ton of attention for how long it's been out. So even if you don't think you'll like it, I suggest you give it a spin for five chapters, and if you're not already hooked, move on. Demons and Strangers takes place in a world full of cultivators. Cultivators spend the bulk of their time cultivating a bunch of spiritual mumbo jumbo to attain immortality and control various powerful ghosts. Very creative name, I know. Our main character Mo is a kid who's taken in as an orphan and indoctrinated into one of these cultivator schools. And while he's seen as pretty unremarkable among his peers, he actually lives a double life completing task for some shady organization. As a test from his school, Mo is sent to capture one of the ghosts I mentioned. He then sets out for an area rich with the strongest ghosts around. What he finds, however, is the strongest ghost around, an ex-cultivator. And through some weird twist of fate, this ancient badass cultivator guy becomes Mo's master, even after Mo graduates from his school and sets off on his own. I enjoy stories that just drop me in a world, don't make me read a huge wall of text, don't have 20 minutes straight of exposition, just put me there. Demons and Strangers does a real good job of exactly that. Each chapter gives you a little bit more information about the lore rich world, and at the end of most chapters there's even descriptions about the weird shit you might have seen while reading that you can totally skip if you want to. Since the story has given me a chance to breathe and formulate my own questions about how things came to be, it actually makes learning about the lore fun, which is a storytelling tactic I don't see a lot of manhwa employ. This makes Mo navigating the world and getting stronger is super engaging. He's got a sick ass cat sidekick that drops pearls of wisdom occasionally, and Mo himself is kind of the shit. He's a cocky guy who murders stuff, and that's pretty dang cool in my book. Wait, is that? No, not the tremendous milkers, that art style. It's kind of wacky. I believe this is actually a manhwa instead of a manhwa, so the art style is pretty different from the other stuff on this list. In fact, it's pretty rad. I personally love the aesthetic of this comic and how they've drawn the cool spirits and powers and stuff, while it does look sloppy at times. That's about it. My prescription is to run this about 10 chapters before deciding if it's your thing or not. They pass by quickly. Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint is about a 20-year-old man who's working as the bitch of some company. To pass time, he spent the last several years being the only one reading a very special web novel, and it's finally the big day where the last chapter airs. After he reads up and leaves his final comment on the series, the author hits him up and even sends him a gift. But right as that gift comes through, the world gets kinda weird. Their train is forced to an abrupt halt and a supernatural squishy thing appears, informing everyone that they will be forced to participate in various scenarios. The first one being that everyone on the train has to murder another living being to survive. Anyway, the interesting part is that Kim already knows what's gonna happen. He's read it before. That's pretty much the premise, but let me expand on the world a little bit. The story is still very young, so I could be totally wrong, but it seems like this thing is running an interdimensional Twitch stream to appease a bunch of gods. The viewers can of course donate to their favorite humans and grant unique powers that give them an edge in a lot of scenarios. The humans also gain skill points which can then be invested in a variety of stats like stamina or health. So far I'm in love with the plot. I think the idea of this group of people surviving in a now apocalyptic earth and being forced to complete game quests is already pretty interesting, but throw in a guy who's read this whole thing like a story and has abilities pertaining to that trait, and you've made it a little bit cooler. This art is also really, really good. It's made by the illustrator behind solo leveling, so you can imagine how the future action might look. My only problem so far is that reading this is kind of like listening to someone who uses too many big words. It says a lot of shit, but really it's not saying anything. A lot of these chapters can just be combined or scrapped. Like, the first chapter basically only says, this guy likes reading, look at how much he likes reading. And then on the second chapter, the imp appears like halfway through and spends the rest of the time saying, hey everybody, you're on a game show, and spends another fucking chapter just telling us what the game is. That could have all been one chapter. It should have been one chapter. They spend another two chapters with this fucking dude holding Kim by his neck while they have a conversation. They start chapter 11 with Kim getting held by his neck, and they end chapter 12 with him still being held by his neck. But here's the thing. This is why I've swapped out one of the stories I was gonna talk about for this one. I was reading the comments on Kiss Manga, and fans of the light novel were freaking out. Like, apparently the light novel is this S-tier masterpiece material that's finally being adapted by a talented illustrator. I guess there's plot twists and things that happen really early on that get called back to and all that. So while I don't necessarily like how some of the chapters are written, the story seems extremely promising according to what I've read in every comment section. 
And also, I want to be able to say I was the first one to find it. Aside from that issue I have, I'm liking the characters, the world, the premise, and art, so I recommend you read this right alongside myself. I believe that if they're faithful to the novels, this might be the next big thing, or it'll suck. A lot of the stories on this list are either really moody or really edgy shit, because I like really moody and edgy shit. I don't know, I eat my boogers, I'm not a very complex man. But to kind of provide some contrast, I'm talking about Overgeared. Overgeared takes place right here on Earth, but mainly in the VR game, Satisfy. Our main character, Grid, is one of the players of this game, so devoted that when he's not working his horrible, labor-intensive job, he goes right back into the game, hoping to earn some more money. While nearing completion on a quest that's taken a month to finish, he finds out that the quest item he's supposed to return would actually be way more profitable to sell than finishing the mission would be. When he tries to do so, the in-game characters freak out, leaving him with no other option than to use the book himself. And this book is one of very few unique classes in the game, the Legendary Blacksmith class. The catch is, the book sets him back to level 1, so not only does he have to relearn a whole new playstyle, but he also has to try to not be murdered while doing so. Here's the cool thing about the story, in a lot of these main character gets a cheat class stories, the guy will get some class that seems useless and then two chapters later they get overpowered to the point where it's like, A. Why the fuck did anyone think this class was weak if it was that easy to kill things? And B. Why have the whole weak class thing in the first place if you're just gonna forget about it a chapter later? Grid got the class knowing it was pretty cool, but often feels cheated by the game because of how slow it is at the start, deservingly so. The legendary blacksmith class allows Grid to create blueprints for any weapon he thinks of, the only drawback being that he needs extremely rare materials to make them and a lot of the weapons have unrealistic requirements. However, he can wield any weapon regardless of requirements in exchange for a steep debuff. This means that he has to follow a clear line of progression as a blacksmith in order to become a high level player. So while there is a bit of action where he has to get nice and creative in how he fights, a lot of the manhwa is just him chilling, being a blacksmith and grinding. Grid has terrible luck, I don't mean oh I fell into some boobies and got slapped, His his RNG is actually rigged, but his whole quirk is that he has so much willpower he surmounts any issues his bad luck brings. And after thinking about it, even him finding the skill before anyone else was due to him working his ass off. It's nice to see a main character who consistently works hard and reaps the benefits of that hard work. Grid discovers things about himself and kind of develops from a standard gamer to a slightly more laid back guy who enjoys blacksmithing, gradually developing relationships and becoming a more and more prominent figure in the game without even noticing. And don't forget that this is still a game. He encounters quests and even rivalries with other players while leveling up. It can even be fun watching him go sell stuff he's crafted at the marketplace. Overgeared is a very upbeat and chill read. If you want to not think very much, enjoy fantasy action, video games, and most isekai, Overgeared is one of my personal favorites in this sort of genre. It even made me laugh a few times. The art's really good, and this is actually a remake of the first adaptation. The original didn't follow the light novel very well, so they scrapped the artist and started over. So far, fans of the novel and myself are pretty excited about it. I would suggest skipping the first chapter and giving the next seven a read to see if it's for you. Okay, if you like this video, don't subscribe. I do anime content and plan to keep it that way. However, I've kept my favorite webtoon to myself and plan on talking about that pretty soon. And also, on my other channel, I'm about to do some not anime content. Thanks, peace.